वेलकम टू इपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मुनिमय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंगुएज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा टुडे वी विल डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल फ्रॉम द पेपर इंडियन एस्थेटिक्स एंड द मॉड्यूल इज ऑन बंकिम चंद्र चैटर्जी एंड हिज कंट्रीब्यूशन टू इंडियन लिटरेरी थॉट बंकिम चंद्र चैटर्जी वॉज बॉर्न इन ऑन 27th June 1838 in the village Kathalpara of the 24 Pargunas district of West Bengal of Dadin Bengal Bankim Chandra Chatterjee had his early education in Midnapur district he was a brilliant student after his early education in Midnapur Bunkim Chandra Chattopadhyay or Bunkim Chandra Chatterjee joined the Mohshin College of Hooghly and studied there for 6 years. In 1856, Bunkim Chandra Chatterjee joined the Presidency College Calcutta. In 1857, there was a strong revolt against the rule of East India Company, but Bunkim Chandra Chatterjee continued his studies and passed his BA examination. in 1859 the lieutenant govern government the lieutenant governor of calcutta appointed bonkim chandra chatterjee as deputy collector in the same year bonkim chandra was in government service for almost 32 years and retired in 1891 he was a very conscientious worker Bankim Chandra was married when he was only 11 at that time his wife was only 5 years old Bankim Chandra was only 22 when his wife died after some time he married again his second wife was Raj Lakshmi Devi and they had three daughters now let us talk about his works Bankim Chandra began his literary journey as a writer of bars and then he shifted into writing the novels romance and writing essays and critical thoughts the first writing of um, his novel Durgesh Nandini was published in 1865 His famous novels include Kapal Kundala 1866, Mrinalini 1869, Visha Briksha 1873, Chandra Shekhar 1860 1877, Rajani 1877, Raj Shimha which is his historical novel published in 1881 and Devi Choudhury was published in 1884 Bankim Chandra Chatterjee is most famous for his most uh, controversial and debated novel uh, which is Anand Mart which was published in 1882 This novel contains a song Bande Mataram uh, which is a devotional song and which imagines uh, own one's own country as mother and motherland and this gradually becomes a mantra for the revolutionaries or for the people who are engaged in indian nationalist movement and later on this song adapted as national song of india bonkim chandra wanted to bring about a cultural revival of bengal by stimulating the intellect of the bengali speaking people through literary campaign with this end in view he brought out monthly magazine called bongo darshan in 1872 the most significant thing about bongo darshan is bankim chandra successfully made a uh, an intellectual group a group of writer and writers and thinkers who used to write in bangla darshan uh, so this bongo darshan had immense uh, contribution 
in the literary and philosophical thoughts in Dadin Bengal. Bunkim Chandra was a very, very efficient storyteller and a master of romance. Many novels written by Bunkim Chandra are known as romance but not as a novel in true sense. No Bengali writer before or since has enjoyed such spontaneous and universal popularity as Bunkim Chandra Chatterjee as writer. His novels have been translated in almost all the major languages of India, including English. Bunkim Chandra um, died in April 8, on April 8, uh, 1894. Bunkim Chandra began his literary career with a desire to write in English and wrote a novel called uh, Rajmohan's Wife. And this is uh, known as the first Indian novel written in English. He once realized his mistake with the realization that the, his work was much more natural and powerful in his own mother tongue. And then he shifted in writing uh, novels and other critical thoughts in mother tongue. And once he uh, started to translate his first uh, novel Rajmohan's Wife, which was written in English into Bengali. The major novels he wrote, as we mentioned, that were Chandra Shekhar, Krishna Kantir Will, Devi Chaudhurani, Shita Ram, Indira, Kamala Kanto. Uh, Kamala Kanter Daptor is not novel, but uh, um, uh, uh, writing piece of his, um, which shows his mastery over writing. The Ananda Morth uh, deserves special mention in this discussion as we just mentioned earlier because of his immense contribution in the nationalist movement and, Ananda, and, and Bunkim's thought about nation and the motherland. As we told earlier that Bunkim first started writing verse then he shifted into writing the um, novels or uh, he started to uh, started uh, storytelling. Uh, the first anthology of his verse was published as Lalita Tatha Manas. The other writing, instead of his uh, creative writing, are uh, I mean the very famous uh, of his uh, critical writing or um, writings, what thoughts, other thoughts, other philosophical thoughts, and his. Uh, different ideas about literature and Indian tradition. Those are Krishna Charitra, Dharma Tattva or Philosophy of Dharma, Deva Tattva or Principle of Divinity and a commentary on Bhagavad Gita. Not many in world literature have excelled in both philosophy and art as Bankim Chandra has done. Uh, um, of his books of that genre, uh, we have specially regard for Krishna Charitra, a classic par excellence. It is a pioneering work where Krishna is subjected to pragmatic inquiry. Bankim Chandra strives to understand Krishna as a historic person and as a rational human being, not as a fabrication of myths and legends. And through this understanding or through this, this new interpretation of Krishna, the whole understanding of Krishna, what were there before Bunkim's Krishna Charitra is actually changed. He put a new notion about Krishna because Krishna was observed as a hero, as a god who is there since thousands of years in oral and folk traditions of different parts of India. Krishna was there in Mahabharata, Krishna was there in Purana. Krishna was observed as divine power, as God, as friend. In Vaishnavite movement, Krishna is observed as friend, as son, as, as lover and as God. But this is for the first time Bankim Chandra tried to establish him as historic figure. He tried to broke all the myths and legends 
about Krishna. So Krishna is not confined and limited only into the orality or the godness or the myth and the legends. But Krishna was observed, was tried to be established as historic figure by Bankim Chandra. Bankim Chandra had great regard um, for the literary figure Ishwar Gupta who came before him and Ishwar Chandra Gupta has immense influence in um, Bengali literature creating um, Bengali literature which was not influenced by colonial ideas or colonial literary ideologies and Bankim Chandra says that Ishwar Chandra Gupta or Ishwar Gupta is the last pure writer of Bengal, the indigenous writer of Bengal. After Ishwar Chandra Gupta, nobody born as pure or indigenous writer of Bengal because we had already absorbed or adopted the hybrid culture which was mixed of the Sanskrit culture or ancient Indian culture and the European culture. So Ishwar Gupta was the last uh, indigenous poet of Bengal. Bunkim Chandra, to talk about Bunkim Chandra's writing, Bunkim Chandra was in prose what Madhusudan was in verse, the founder of a new style, the exponent of a new idea. In creative imagination, he gorgeous, he had a gorgeous description in the power to conceive and in skill to describe Madhusudan and Bonkim. Madhusudan and Bonkim Chandra stand apart from the other writers of the century. They are the first, the second is no higher. These two figures were the creation of modernity, the creation of modern India or the renaissant India or the India of colonial modernity. They observed the two strong tradition of literature and they adapted thoughts from two, two tradition, two strong, strong and ancient tradition of literature of the world. One is the ancient Indian literary culture and another is European literary culture. The comment which compared Bankim and Madhusudan, what I just made few uh, minutes back, is made by a famous literary critic Ramesh Chandra Datta in his book History of Bengali Literature. And it was, the, the comment is taken from B. Choudhury's Bangla Shahitir Iti Gotha, page number 374-1960. And for other relevant references, you can con uh, consult the e-text. Now, um, then the all-round development of Bengali language and literature, Bunkim Chandra published a magazine which I mentioned few times back is Bangadarshan, uh, which was published in 1872. It was the principal medium for publishing or for publication of all his essays. A revolutionary change came in his prose style through this magazine and we can observe the revolutionary changes in writing when he started publishing essays and other critical writings. A clear, uh, simple uh, and the logical language is the life and soul of a literary composition. He actually believed it and we can observe it in, in his critical writings. In the pages of Bangadarshan, we find a sincere effort to make the language lively, easy and easily intelligible to the readers. The critical writing, what are very famous and what are the actually the resources to find the Indian knowledge, Indian tradition from the modern point of view, from the modern uh, interpretation that are the, the essays written by Bunkim Chandra called uh, Biggan Rahosho, uh, Bibidho Shamalachana, which was published in 1876, and Roy Dunubundu Mitro Bahadure Jiboni, which was published in 1877, Shammo, 
and um, Krishna Charitra first part was published in 1886 and Krishna Charitra the complete works published in 1892 and the Vividho Prabandho 1892 this text expressed presents Bankim Chandra's literary view literary understanding theoretical understanding about literature and his philosophical thoughts and his thoughts on history he was the first who showed the way to study and discuss the history of bengal and the bengalis a scientific he uh, proposed a scientific manner he wanted to write the history of bengal for the self assertion of the bengalis sukumar sen a famous linguist and literary historian of bengali literature comments that in this regard that the reason behind his such uh, perseverance was uh, the was his instill and enduring self respect mind of the educated bengalis through the discussion of the country's ancient history and her glorious past bunkim chandra actually regretted this fact that bengalis didn't have history and that history in 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 very very european sense that how the method of writing history we have learned from europe in that sense bunkim chandra says that bengalis do not have history and he that is why he tried to write history he tried to find the ancestors of bengalis and the root of bengalis which was the times need after colonial oppression and colonial rule that the race was trying to find its own identity so it is actually in search of identity that bunkim chandra says that bengalis do not have history and he tried to write a history of bengali bunkim was also a first rate literary critic he had <laughs> deep knowledge in english language and literature he has chiefly tried to assess bengali literature setting it against the sanskrit and english literature his uttar charit vidyapati o joydev shakuntala minanda o desdimona all these critical essays shows his literary understanding and deepness of thought about literature beside this these essays uh, proposes uh, these essays uh, these essays propose a comparative method and comparative study of literature pure philosophical essays of bunkim chandra also carry the sheer science of his extraordinary talent and genius in this type of essays we can um, find uh, sankhya darshan and um, manushat uh, manushatta he has expounded the special features of indian philosophy in and uh, this essays which are intelligible style and within a very limited space uh, he expressed the serious and light subject on which he wrote essays uh, some like uh, definitely uh, these are definitely uh, these have definitely a literary success his writings like anukarana or um, dharma evam sahitya sangeet bahutil vaktavyal ramdhan pod etc are short length writing uh, which uh, in, in such a manner of presentation make them proper subject of writing essays on so bunkim chandra's contribution so bunkim chandra's contribution is not only writing novels or writing critical essays or philosophical thoughts but he proposed the style of writing bengali prose writing a bengali prose for discursive text now uh, we we can have a brief uh, briefly we can have a, a list of the writings of bunkim chandra and uh, so uh, the major fictions written by him durgesh nandini which was published in march 1865 kapal kundala 1866 mrinalini 1869 bishobrikho the poison tree 1873 Indira 1873 and revised in 1893 uh, Jugola Jugola Rangio uh, Jugola Anguriyo 1874 Radharani 1876 and it was enlarged in 
1893, Chandrasekhar, which was published in 1877, uh, or Kamala Kante from the desk of Kamala Kanto, which was published in 1875, Rajani was published in 1877, Krishna Kanter Will was published in 1878, Raj Singho was published in 1882, Anandamot was published in 1882, Devi Chodhurani was published in 1884, Kamala Kante Doctor was 1885, Sitaram was published in March 1887, Muchiram Gure Jibon Chodit, The Life of Muchiram Gur, and there are few religious commentaries, those are Krishna Charitra or History of Krishna, it was published in 1886, Dharma Tattva or Principles of Religion, published in 1888, Devatattva or Principles of Divinity published posthumously. Srimad Bhagavad Gita, a commentary on the Gita which was published in 19, 1902 and it was also published posthumously. And Bankim Chandra also had poetry collection like Lalito O Manash which was published in 1858. Now let us have uh, the titles of Bankim Chandra's essays. Loka Rahasya, Essays on Society 1874. And it was enlarged in 1888. Bigyan Rahasya, Essays on Science, and it, uh, it was published in 1875. Bichitra Prabandho, or Assorted Essays, Volume 1, 1876, and Volume 2, 1892. Shammo, or Equality, 1879. Now, let us talk about Bonkim's idea of nationalism. Dr. Anil Boron Rai, in his Bunkim Chandra, Development of Nationalism and Indian Identity, comments about the sources of Bunkim's nationalism. This is important to know the source of Bunkim's nationalism before analyzing the, the, the nationalist thought of Bunkim. I quote, As regards the sources, Bunkim Chandra acknowledged the influence of English utilit uh, utilitarianism and French positivism on his political thought, but asserted all the same his independence of them by critiquing them where they, in his opinion, deserved such criticism. As a philosophy, utilitarianism sought to judge all actions and policies, particularly governmental, in the light of the ability or utility of such policies and actions to promote the good of the greatest number of people. Such a philosophy, Bunkim Chandra reasoned was flawed on two counts. First, it was not ethically speaking a foolproof philosophy. The Indian ideal as laid down in its ancient scriptures of doing good to all, which found expression in the following pronouncement of the rishis. Sarve Vabantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramaye Sarve Vadrai Pawa Pawantu Sarve Vadrai Pawantu Ma Kalchit Dukhavak Vavit May all be happy, may all be free from disease, may all realize that which is good, may none be subject to misery. Was to Bankim Chandra and infinitely better ideal in terms of both religion and ethics than that which utilitarianism gave to mankind. Bunkim Chandra's second objection was rooted in the ground reality revealing um, Bunkim Chandra's second objection was rooted in the ground reality prevailing in India of his times. Whatever, whatever be the exhortation of English political philosophies such as utilitarianism, the British government of India had its own primary intersects such as augmenting its own exchequer and could not be expected to go to any great length in doing good to a subject people. It was a better policy, therefore for Indians to rely on their own strength in terms of generating national awareness, preparing the people for struggle and the self-sacrifice required for such struggle and curtailing their dependence on the government as an agency 
for promoting general welfare. It was from such a conceptualization of politics that Bunkim Chandra criticized the politics of Barbo city, of talks without constructive work that was in vogue in India during his time. He detested such politics and criticized it on the following counts with a view to giving it a more constructive orientation. First, the prevalent brand of politics was city-centric, mainly confined to a few cities like Calcutta. Second, it was confined to the upper stratum of society, the city-bred leaders and their followers. Third, its discourse was conducted in the English language, be it through the press or on the platform. Fourth, its activities. Its activities were more often than not one-shot affairs, ending either in passing resolutions in annual sessions and begging the British government for some favor or other or in writing articles in newspaper, mainly uh, childing, uh, mainly cheating the British administration for some omission or commission on their part. Such politics, far from doing any good to the people, actually alienated them. It widened the gulf between the city and the country, between the educated and the uneducated, and between the English-speaking leaders and the masses. I unquote. So this is uh, this is the historical context and philosophical context from where Bunkim Chandra gathered, or Bunkim Chandra conceptualized his idea of nationalism. Bande Mataram presents the core of Bunkim Chandra's thoughts on nationalism in on three counts. One is it exhorts. It exhorts the mother's children, the people of the country, to think only of their motherland as their mother. Second, it exhorts them to view their motherland mother as their be all and end all. Thou art knowledge, thou art conduct, thou art heart, thou art soul. For thou art the life in our body, in the arm thou art might, O mother. In the heart, O mother, thou art love and faith. It is thy image, image we raise in every temple. Since the mother represented the essence of the beings of her children, it was the sacred duty of all her children to give themselves up to the service of the mother, to dedicate themselves to the mother. And sacrifice their, and sacrifice their, and sacrifice their all for the mother. Now let us have a critique of Bunkim's nation. Uh, the first novel uh, written by Bunkim is in English, Rajmohan's Wife, and certainly Bengal's first important novelist is. Bankim Chandra. Indeed, it is not at all unusual to read Bankim as one of the creators of Indian nationalism who used devices such as allegory and personification extensively to convey his ideas. Sri Aurobindo made such an interpretation in the essays that he wrote as early as 1894, the year of Bankim's death in Indu Prakash, arguing that what Bankim was trying to create was nothing short of a language, a literature, and a nation. Anandamat, despite Bankim's additions of pro-British statements in the second edition of 1883, inspired generations of Indian freedom fighters, both a national song and a battle cry. It influenced generations of revolutionaries as well as moderates. I would, like to, I would like to suggest that though the pronounced nationalism of Anandamot belongs to a later phase in Bankim's career, its beginnings may be found in Rajmohan's wife. This is because Bankim's larger project was nothing short of the task of imagining a nation into existence through his fictional and non-fictional writings, consciously or unconsciously. That is what he strove to accomplish. 
it is only in the mythic discourse of novels that such a task can be accomplished. Kaviraj calls this discourse of Bankim's imaginary history after Budhe Mukhopadhyay's famous phrase, famous phrase, Shapno, Shapno Lobdho Bharat Barsher Itihas, the title of an influential essay. The phrase is felicitous because of its multiple semantic possibilities. Not only does it mean the more obvious history of India as revealed or obtained in a dream, but it also suggests that the Bharat Barsher or India that it refers to is itself revealed or obtained in a dream and therefore imaginary. These and many other reasons tempt us to read Rajmohan's wife as an imaginary history of modern India, as a sort of national allegory, to use Jameson's phrase, by setting itself up as a sort of originary exemplar of a certain cultural encounter, the novel seems to promise much. However, the only exemplary value that most critics have derived from it is to regard it as a false start, the road that should not have been taken an Indian writer beginning in English but rightfully returning to his native tongue. Instead, I would prefer to see it as a work in progress rather than a false start. Rajmohan's wife negotiates one path for India's future growth and development. In this path, the English educated elites of the country must lead India out of bondage and exploitation. And if we see the Bunkib's turn from English to writing in Bengali, we can remember the turn of Madhusudan Datta, another Bengali, one of the most talented writers of Indian literature who first started writing in English and then turned into writing in Bengali, also a modern writer. Um, I quote, um, I unquote uh, the Bunkim, uh, the um, critic of Bunkim's nation. Now let us uh, talk few things about Bunkim's role as a critic, where Bunkim Chandra expressed his literary thought and philosophical thought. There are very significant issues regarding Bunkim's uh, literary thought and philosophical thought. Interestingly, Bunkim's novels are paid great attention from the modern critics and the uh, Dadin critics uh, of Bunkim Chandra. But Bunkim Chandra's essays and articles what express literary and philosophical thought of Bunkim Chandra while not paid much attention. Shubodh Chandra Sen Gupta, a famous critic of Bengali literature, found few points or few characteristics of Bunkim Chandra's literary thought and philosophical thought or Bunkim Chandra's role as critic. S. C. Sen Gupta says that Bunkim Chandra's essays are very much empirical in true sense. Those are essentially modern in spirit and approach. Bunkim Chandra was a revivalist sometime and it is not an unique character of Bunkim but it is general character of 19th century intellectual that they believed in revivalism. They started revivalism because taking birth in, in the conjuncture of Sanskrit or ancient Indian culture and the European culture, those cultural hegemonies made them to revival Indian culture and Bengali culture more specifically. Bunkim Chandra rejected Sanskrit poetic thought like Alamkara and claimed for a new modern thought or aesthetics for new era of modernism and his Gitikabya is such essay which shows 
Bunkim's idea of literature or which very clearly expresses Bunkim's idea of poetics. Bunkim believes that the beauty, uh, that, the, that the love for beauty is man's instinctive nature and man try to find this beauty in color, beauty in shape, beauty in movement, beauty in sound and beauty in word. Those find beauty in color are painters, those find beauty in shape are sculpture, those find beauty in movement are the theatre personalities or the actors and those find beauty in sound they are musicians those find beauty in words those are poets bunkim chandra had clear division in his mind about drama epic and lyric he was influenced about aristotle's poetics and aristotle's literary thought but in his understanding, there was clear difference between drama and epic. Bunkim Chandra expressed that drama and critic both have action and dialogue, but in drama, everything should be happened through dramatic personae. Character must take precedence over plot. In narrative poetry, large epic, actions are primary and so plot ever overshadowed the characters. So Bunkim, from his own point of view, he defines the epic, he defines the characters of drama and the differences between epic and drama. And most significantly, he talks about the narrative poems and how the characters are overshadowed by the plots of the narrative poems. When Bunkim talks about narrative poems, it, it is actually the time's demand because narrative poems in Bengal emerged in medieval India like any other parts of India or like any other language of India. And Bunkim Chandra uh, gave a glimpse of theorization, glimpse of narrative poetry, glimpse of finding characters of narrative poetry. And this is how you, he theorized the character of narrative poetry, what actually emerged before 300 or 400 uh, before uh, Bunkim Chandra came into being. So this is very significant. Mysterious emotion of man can only be expressed through the lyric intensity of it. He talks about Jayadeva and Vidyapati who have intensity in their lyricism. Bunkim Chandra emphasized on the intensity as unique character of lyric. To talk about Dinobandhu Mitra, he divides creative faculty into three parts. Though it is not unique or exceptional than Sanskrit poetics, because we see different Sanskrit scholars who are talking about creative talent or Karoitri Pratibha. Bunkim Chandra divided this creative faculty in three parts. One is experience or observation, then is sympathy, and the third one is creative imagination. And according to Bunkim Chandra, the great writers have all the three qualities together. Bunkim Chandra was more a practical, empirical reviewer than a theoretical exponent of aesthetics. He never faces the basic problems of poetics because according to him the modern times needed modern poetics so from his point of view he started to reinterpret the poetics thought of Sanskrit literature and Aristotle he did not deal with single ideal in his literature he always offered the multifaceted or multiple ideal ideals in his literature he was not ready to promote a morality through a single ideal or single character of his novel. Literature should aim at two things, creation of beauty or the good mankind. So he tried to create the beauty through his language and good human being through his narrative. He made a distinction between two kinds of literature. Literature which reveals 
hidden impulses and lofty cravings and literature such as that of Ishwar Chandra Gupta which observes, describes and exposes what is of the earth and arti. I unquote. Another critic of Bengali literature, Shatendranath Roy, theorized Bunkim's understanding of literature and the theories of literature reflected in Bunkim's writing. Shatendranath Roy, in same book, talks about the theory of Tagore, Tagore's literature. So this is kind of comparison between Bunkim's theory of literature and Tagore's theory of literature. Uh, Bankim Chandra himself told that he is not supposed to define poetry as it is already well defined by the European scholars. So we can have observe always a sense of duality in Bankim Chandra. We can find classicism and romanticism together in Bankim Chandra's writing. We can find the Western science and Eastern religion in Bankim Chandra. We can find the emphasis on argument and emphasis in devotion both in the writings of Bankim Chandra. We can find the modernity and the existence of tradition and conflict between these two in Bankim Chandra. We can find the individuality, individual freedom of characters and the, and the pluralistic or joint family structure in Bankim Chandra's writing. Dharma o Shahitto, Nabbu, uh, Dharma o Shahitto, what Bankim Chandra wrote is actually the example of neo hinduism or nobbo hinduism or hindutto vad giti kabbo is actually the basic of indian poetics where he deals with the indian poetics and reinterpret and criticize the indian poetics or different aspects of indian poetics and last of all we can find the comparative method from bankim chandra's writing especially the essays like um, shokuntala miranda desdibona and the joydev o vidyapati so to conclude we can say that bankim chandra one of the greatest figure greatest literary figure of modern indian literature who is creation of modernity who came in the age of neo hinduism and and the age of revivalism and his creative writing are uh, talked much more than the, his uh, critical writings but his critical writing uh, presents a different kind of bankim chandra in front of us if we understand if we try to understand the modernity, the modernism, the colonial modernity, the Indian, the philosophy or epistemology of Indian modernism, we have to read Bankim Chandra. Without Bankim Chandra, it is not possible. And the critical essays and philosophical thoughts, whatever, are expressed through Bankim Chandra's essays and other writings uh, like uh, Bhagavad Gita and and krishna charitra all these are actually the philosophy or or, or the the philosophical psyche of modern man what actually help us to understand the modernism and through this all writing and bankim chandra's position in duality bankim chandra we can find bankim chandra's literary thought which is modern literary theory and modern literary thought to us which is not influenced by any European theory that creates Bankim Chandra's theory. Bankim Chandra's theory is not the replica of any European theory, but it emerges, it emerged as, as the hybridity of ancient Indian theory and culture and literature and philosophy and, uh, and its connection with the European literature, philosophy and culture. So we find a new theory of modernism, of Indian modernity from Bonkim Chandra. Thank you.